Hello, my name is Matt Cortez and I'm the sales manager for Europe with CTC. Today we're going to be going over vibration monitoring for cooling towers. We will be going through a quick background and overview of the importance of condition monitoring cooling towers. And then I will be going through uh, the products that CTC offers that are commonly used for these systems. I'm going to start off with a quick overview of CTC. All of our products are made in the US. Our manufacturing and office is located in Victor, New York. All of the products that you see here today are covered under our unconditional lifetime warranty. We are ISO 9001 certified. We serve industrial vibration analysis market. Our products are designed and tested to meet real world demands of industrial environments. And all of our products are also compatible with all major data collectors, analyzers, and online software systems. Now, moving on to a quick background of the industries that predominantly use cooling towers. These industries include oil refineries, pharmaceuticals, chemical plants, thermal power stations, nuclear power stations, paper mills, and HVAC systems. Um, cooling towers are very often a critical part of these systems, so any downtime to any kind of failure um, can result in lost money and major issues for the company. Um, in the next couple of slides, I'll be going through common failures and also which of our products can be used to prevent them. So first, I'm going to be going over the major components that make up a cooling tower, whether it's a 600 foot tower attached to a nuclear power plant or just a small rooftop unit on, on top of a building for their HVAC system. They, for the most part, all have the same components and serve the same purpose. Uh, that purpose is shown right there, and that's to remove heat from a liquid to lower the temperature. It's pretty simply stated, but uh, true across the board. I've also listed the components that make up the system. And that is the motor. Uh, the motor is usually very accessible and located outside of the cooling tower cell. And then there are the gearbox and fan, which are commonly um, inaccessible and located inside the cooling tower cell. Uh, the, the inaccessibility of these components make it difficult to monitor this um, unless a permanently mounted conditioning monitoring system is in place. Um, the, the reason for this is because if it's not permanently mounted, you will not be able to access these components unless the entire system is shut down, which, as you can imagine, will require a lot of time and coordination. Now moving on to types of failures that are commonly seen, as well as how commonly the component is the cause of the failure. Starting off with the motor, this is the source of failure about 60% of the time. Types of failures for this component includes imbalance, looseness, and shaft misalignment. The next most common location of failure is the gearbox, which occurs about 30% of the time. The types of failures that this component sees is the gearbox, um, includes misalignment. This misalignment is caused by aerodynamic loading from the fan. Another type of failure is caused by the lack of lubrication. And finally, deterioration from chemicals. Chemicals are commonly added to the water in the system to control the pH levels. Um, these chemicals, unfortunately, often play an effect on the lifespan of the gearbox. Finally, the fan, which is the source of failure about 2% of the time. Um, it's, kind of, it's unlikely, however, a failure of this component can be catastrophic for the entire system and destroy the system. So it's important to monitor this component as well. I'm gonna quickly go through the challenges of monitoring. Um, then I'll be getting into specific products that we offer. Uh, there are solutions to all of these challenges listed here, and I will address them as I go through our product lines. So the most common challenges faced when uh, condition monitoring cooling towers are safety concerns, limited accessibility, clearance issues, chemicals, and then finally coordination considerations. 
So to start out, these are the common accelerometers that we suggest for monitoring. At the top right there, you can see our AC-102 and the AC-104. This is offered with a top and side exit. Below those in the middle are the AC-192 and AC-194. These are all of our general purpose sensors. We do offer more, but these are the most commonly used. The sensitivity for these are 100 millivolt per G. There's a couple of differences between the AC-102 and the 192. One being the size. The AC-102 is our standard size sensor and the AC-192 is the compact size sensor. So if clearance is gonna be an issue for your system, we do offer that smaller size sensor with the AC-192. Another difference between the two sensors are the dynamic range. With the AC-102 and the AC-104, you will be getting a dynamic range of plus or minus 50 Gs. With the AC-192 or AC-194, you will be getting a dynamic range of plus or minus 80 Gs. Now moving on to our connector and cabling options. Um, all the sensors that I showed on the previous slide have a two pin mill connection. So all the connectors on this slide are compatible with those. Our A two way connector that is shown on the top right of your screen. This is our standard connector option. Below that is our A two E connector. That is our standard right angle connector. So again, if clearance is gonna be an issue for your system, we do offer this option. Below those two options is our Viton boot option. Um, previous slide, I had mentioned that chemicals may play a part in your system. So this Viton boot may be a good decision. Uh, the Viton boot actually gives you an IP68 rating. We offer these boots in two types of materials listed there, the V2N, which is the nylon option and the V2R, which is the PPS option. Um, decision for this material really depends on the uh, temperature of your system. The nylon is rated to 121 degrees Celsius, while the PPS is our high temp option and rated to 177 degrees Celsius. Below the connectors is our cabling options. Either cable will work. It's really kind of user, to, uh, user preference for these. The top cable is the CB111 and our FEP ejected cable. And below that at the bottom is the CB206 and that is our armor, armored cable option. Now moving on to junction boxes. Like I said at the beginning of the presentation, it's very important to have a permanently mounted condition monitoring system. Um, and, these condition, and these junction boxes will allow you to do that. The top two there that are shown are our switch boxes, and the bottom two shown are the max box options. So the difference between the two is the amount of time that it will take you to take a reading. Um, if you select a switch box, this will allow you to con connect to it one time, and then you will have the ability to switch between each channel after just making the one connection. If you do go the max box option route, you will have to manually take each reading that is more time consuming than the switch box. So the switch box is a higher price um, at first. However, the time you will save while taking the readings will eventually make up for that cost. The switch boxes that I've listed there, um, again, we have many more options on our website. However, these are the most commonly used for this application. So I show the JB110, that is our fiberglass option at the top. And then the JB210 in the middle, that is our stainless steel option. When ordering these, when ordering these on our website, you will also be given a couple more options, one being the amount of channels you would like to use, as well as the input and output method of the cabling. You will have the choice of either user preference, conduit fitting, or cord grip fitting. Since these boxes are more than likely going to be installed outside, 
we do suggest uh, using the core grip fitting, and that's just to give the entire enclosure a better seal to protect from the environment. And then at the bottom, the two max box options, options I show, MX102, which is the fiberglass enclosure, and then the MX202, which is the stainless steel enclosure. Finally, we move on to the mounting hardware. The top two options you see there on the right hand side are the magnet options. The first being the MH103, that is our flat surface magnet. Below that is the MH112, being the curved surface magnet. For a cooling tower system, these magnets are pretty much only used to measure the motor. Um, this is due to the fact, again, that this is the accessible component of a cooling tower, so you don't necessarily need to permanently mount a sensor on it. You are able to just walk up, uh, slap on the magnet, take your reading, and keep going. Below the magnet options are the adhesive mount and stud mount options. Um, we don't always suggest the adhesive mount option for a cooling tower, again, because of the chemicals used in their systems. Uh, there is a possibility that the chemi chemicals could deteriorate the epoxy and cause the sensor to come loose. So for that reason, we do suggest stud mounting the sensor. At the bottom right hand of the screen, you can see our stud mounting installation toolkits. We offer a wide variety of installation toolkits on our website. Um, that vary in size depending on which type of sensor you choose. And you can find those using the MH117 product number. And I do want to point out that we actually always do suggest stud mounting your sensor when possible. And that's because uh, it will give you the maximum frequency range for the sensor that you choose. So to wrap things up, to go through the benefits of permanently mounting a condition, mo condition monitoring system, this will reduce exposure to safety hazards while taking readings, reduce data collection time, and in return, save money. It will give you the ability to measure previously inaccessible areas. We offer affordable prices. And again, all the products that you saw here today are covered under our unconditional lifetime warranty. Thank you again for joining my webinar today. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to any of our sales representatives here at CTC, and we'll be happy to help you out. Thank you, and have a great rest of your day.